I'm a mystery author, uh, Rob Kresge, Historical Mysteries, and I also have written the historical thriller, a Civil War spy novel based on true events. Oh, good. <laughs> Almost every. I remember that I was in every one in Albuquerque, and I might have missed one of the early ones in Santa Fe. But, uh, but yes, I have been uh, a perennial. The first manuscript took shape. In fact, one of the things I tell writers here is it's important to mark your milestones. When you finish the first draft of your first novel, call your family together and say, watch this the end. Now let's have some champagne. It's only a first draft, but you can only finish the first draft of a first novel once, and I've carried that date in November forward for 10 years every time I flip over a calendar. I finished it. I finished the first draft in Virginia, then we moved out here. Great. Great. Wonderful. And so for you, for Tony, you, you got to know Tony. I did. I played poker with him four times. Can you say, I'm sorry, can you no pronouns, please? Oh, oh I, played poke, I played poker with Tony four times, and I, I was at Tony's house once, and he showed me on his screen. He said, now, this is Sinister Pig. At the end of the first chapter, a retired CIA guy working in New Mexico gets shot in the back and killed. And I raised my eyebrows. I said, oh, no, it's not you. I had this in mind years before we met. But everybody who knows I played poker with Tony says, he must have really liked you. He kills you off at the end of chapter one. So what have, who have you killed off at the end of the chapter, your books? Oh, golly. Um, I've killed off um, uh, a marshal, a, a, a town marshal, on way to, to take over. I have killed off, um, uh, let's see, who did I kill in Painted Women? I killed off, oh, there was a prostitute killed off screen, the rest of that, that sort of, and then someone was framed for the crime in Death's Icy Hand. There have been a series of mysterious deaths that follow Grand Duke Alexis's goodwill visit to the United States. And the book on that, on all the press coverage of it, is located in the Zimmerman Library in two copies in Albuquerque. And I used that to put in real people from that and real incidents. When, he, when there's a ship that blows up in New York, I'm sorry, a cannon blows up on an island in New York Harbor, his ship is grounded in the mud and he was going to be the target of that explosion, but he was still on the ship and didn't get off. And so I invented a, a death in Chicago, that kind of thing. Um, and then in the Civil War spy novel, it's uh, all about who's going to die. It's a plot against Abraham Lincoln based on true stories. So what have you learned from this conference about how to kill off people? Oh, golly. Uh, that kind of information, how to kill off people, has been in virtually every, every conference, but usually spoken by different people or different authors. And it's, it's you know, when I'm writing historicals, there's certain ways they're going to kill people off that people writing today don't use, you know. You, you have cars running people down. That doesn't happen in historicals. It gives me a little, uh, 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 it narrows the, the focus, that kind of thing, in ways that you can kill people. You can shoot them, you can stab them. They try to kill my protagonist with a cattle stampede, and Kate faces danger in a bear attack in Yellowstone. So what, what insight would you give to someone else who's looking to kill off someone in their Oh, I, I'd say read a lot, find colorful ways to do it, and when you're considering the way to do it, is it a way that will leave some clues behind, so to give your protagonist something to work on, or is it a way that you can return to later in the book and threaten one of your protagonists with the same kind of death? Great, great. Anything else you'd like to say to next year's of attendees before they even know they're coming? No, I, I can't think of it, but when I was doing background investigations for counterintelligence, we had a series of questions we would ask people to s about someone we were investigating and at the end my journalism training I used a grab bag question said now is there anything that you can think of about this person that I failed to ask you that you'd like us to know about and a couple of the students in the class said no no that's terrible and the instructor said that's brilliant that's a great idea to make the person invested in what he's already told you by putting it in his hands and saying, now is there anything else that on my checklist I haven't asked you? You have to be willing to do that.